1.50 a.m. and the lander lands. Mm. What happens after that? I mean, when will uh, uh, Pragyan actually emerge from the lander? Do we know that? Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Hello and welcome to the Indian Express. I have with me Amitabh Sinha, the science editor of the Indian Express, and we are going to talk about the Chandrayaan mission, which is reaching its final point in a few hours from now. So what's going to happen in the next few hours is that the Vikram lander of the Chandrayaan mission will descend in the southern polar region of the moon, and that will be really the, 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 the success of the mission will be determined by the landing of uh, the, the Vikram lander. Now, uh, Amitabh, first of all, uh, we are talking of the Chandrayaan mission, we are talking of the Vikram lander, and we're talking of the southern polar region of the moon. So, so if you could just break these, thing, these three things up for our viewers and just explain how, what exactly each of these things mean. Chandrayaan uh, is the integrated spacecraft. That integrated spacecraft has three different modules. Uh, one of them is the orbiter, the other one is lander, the third one is rover. The rover is housed inside the lander as of now. The lander was housed in the main spacecraft. It has detached now already, three, year, three days ago it has detached. It is now the lander and rover, which is housed inside it, are now moving independently of the main spacecraft, which the main spacecraft, the depleted main spacecraft, is your orbiter. Okay, so hang on. Just let me get this right. There is the Chandrayaan, there is the main spacecraft. From the main spacecraft, we have had the lander which is detached and the lander is now in an orbit. Yes. Once the lander lands, mm -hmm. A rover will emerge from yes. the lander, so the lander yes. will not move. The lander does not okay. move. The lander only lands because it lands on four feet okay. and, and it's immobile. Okay. No lander makes any movement on the surface. Uh, all the rover mich missions actually have a robotic component inside the lander, which after the landing, it moves out and uh, slopes down the surface of the moon and then it moves slowly on the surface. That's ah. how most of the rover missions uh, are designed. Oh wow. So so that is the Pragyan rover. That is the Pragyan rover. And the lander is called? The lander is called Vikram. Oh, the Vikram lander. So hmm. the Chandrayaan mission has the Vikram lander within which is the Pragyan rover. Yes. And once the lander lands, the rover is going to emerge. Yes. Okay. And Amitabh, another thing, why are we hearing that this is going to happen in a window of 1.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. on Saturday morning? So, so why is this window there? Uh, okay. So what happens is now, as of now, we have two different spacecraft and spacecraft is a generic term so two different spacecraft moving around the moon right one of them is the depleted main bigger spacecraft which is which will act as the orbiter for the next one uh, year and the other one is the lander which is in a lower orbit and it is moving independently it is also being tracked independently this the uh, lander uh, module is moving in an orbit which uh, it's still an elliptical orbit and at its nearest point from the moon's surface it is about 35 kilometer 35 point something kilometers from moon's surface now it is moving in an ellipse and it is supposed to come out the final descent is supposed to happen when it is nearest to this surface of the moon okay. so that that point is where it would be about 35 point something kilometers from uh, the this moon's surface, surface. Okay. Now, I'm not very sure because uh, the, the, uh, the mission guys would probably know the exact timing when it, when it happens. It is only us that uh, who have been given a slot, but it is possible that this, this lander mission is actually traveling at, at a speed of more than 20,000 kilometers per hour as of now. So it is possible that it, it might happen at say 137, but it might also happen after another rotation 
then it, it, would be hap uh, it would happen after a couple of minutes. So the mission control guys obviously would be knowing it, but it's not being made public. I, I think as we move closer to the timing, we would also know what exact time it would start the descent. Okay, so it's not as simple as a slingshot. It just comes, it's an orbit around the moon. It just comes and boom, it lands. It's not going to be like that. It's going to, and also that you just said, it's moving at a speed of about 20,000 kilometers an yes, hour. Yes. Now at that speed, it's a projectile. So when it lands, it is obviously going to have to land really slowly. Right. So how will that happen? So uh, actually it must be moving at a speed far greater than 20,000 kilometers <laughs> per per hour as of now, uh, at the time that it begins its descent, its speed is likely to, likely to be 6 kilometers per second, which is roughly uh, 21,500, 21,600 kilometers an hour. So just to give you a uh, you know, sense of proportion, a normal airliner uh, travels anywhere between 500 to 800 kilometers an hour, which means this particular uh, lander module at the time it begins the descent would be traveling at 30 to 40 times the speed of a normal commercial airliner uh, when they travel at their average speeds. So at that speed, so f and when it when it begins its descent, it, it doesn't fall down vertically. Okay. It would not go from here to here. It doesn't fall vertically. That distance is only 35 roughly about 35 kilometers, but it goes in, in a projectile way, uh, very much like say an airplane will land, uh, it would traverse both a vertical distance at as, the, well as, uh, yeah. as well as the horizontal distance. Uh, the difference here is that of course airplanes are powered with very good navigation and guidance systems uh, so that they can glide down in a very smooth manner. Here we don't have, the, it doesn't have a braking system. Mm -hmm. So it has to innovate on how to brake its speed. Uh, so, but that is how it will come. It will, uh, it will slow down its speed from somewhere around 20,000 kilometers per hour to roughly about five to seven kilometers an hour, uh, which is a suitable speed to make a safe landing. So, and how exactly will this happen? The slowing down? I mean, there are no brakes in that spacecraft. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, in, in, in space, all spacecraft, uh, that's the uh, standard thing they do, to either to accelerate or to decelerate, they fire thrusters. Uh, what that means is there are propellants uh, which are burnt and that mass, they, uh, after being burnt, they, that mass is ejected out. And depending on the direction in which it's, it, it, it is ejected, uh, depends whether, uh, you know, the uh, spacecraft is gets accelerated or decelerated even during when the rocket launches you see something burning down, yeah. at, at, in the downward direction so it it ejects energy down which makes it go up yeah. it's very similar to what we like when we fire a, a gun for example we fire in that direction and there is a recoil in the opposite okay. direction so what happens is if if the uh, mass is ejected, if the propellant is ejected in the direction of the movement, mm -hmm. so it's moving in this direction and you are also ejecting propellant in the same direction, it will experience a deceleration. So that is sort of breaking okay. that will happen. So as it moves from say 20,000 kilometers per hour, it will start firing thrusters. So all the, uh, it has four thrusters and one possibly a reserve thruster as well. So. Uh, all of them will start firing simultaneously uh, in in um, you know in a balanced uh, quantity of mass so that uh, you know it remains in balance of, so that you know uh, each thruster doesn't uh, send out different sorts of masses then it will wobble in okay. space so it has to f uh, do it in a coordinated way all this is of course like pre-programmed it doesn't have to everything is pre-programmed programmed uh, uh, like a de deceleration profile has already been created and it will fire according to that and it will come down and very nearly the target is to reach two meters per second speed which is roughly about seven kilometers per hour or lower than that at the time of landing okay so seven kilometers per hour is roughly the space at which you can walk 
It's, it's sort yes. of a leisurely walk or is it a brisk walk? It's a brisk walk, it's actually. A brisk walk. We normally walk at about four to five kilometers an hour. Oh. Okay, the, the, the speed right. of, say, some people's morning walk. Yes. Okay, yes. so um, so so as as the, the, the lander descends, uh, there'll be thrusters fired in the direction of the yeah, movement. movement. Okay. So towards the surface of the moon, towards the surface and, of which the moon. will have a decelerating effect. Yes. And then uh, it'll slow down the lander from the speed at which it has started descending yes. till it reaches a speed of about yes. 2 meters per second and it'll gently come down yes. on the surface of the moon. Yes. Fantastic. So... so it's Sorry. it's actually uh, there would uh, there would uh, there, there's another thing that will happen in between. So roughly when it is about about 100 or 150 meters uh, above the surface, uh, wherein uh, the cameras on board the lander they start scouting for a suitable place now to land. Okay. Now that landing place has already been chosen. Okay. It has we know where exactly it's going That's to land. The area, the area okay. we know exactly where it's going to land, uh, and it's a place between two large craters. Okay. Uh, but very granular details of the uh, you so know surface so is not visible from the Earth. It okay. would become visible from that distance. Okay. Now. The, it has to land on its four legs. Okay. It once it reaches that position, then it would be able to see whether there are any boulders there, okay. there are any stones, uh, and it has to avoid those kind of things. Those very small details are not available. No, cannot be seen from here. So the camera there, uh, onboard camera on lander, can detect those obstacles, small obstacles, and it can make small maneuvers to avoid that. Okay. So that will happen once it reaches about 100 meters uh, from the... Uh, okay, so, so as the lander lands, the camera will be watching the surface. Yes, yes. And if there's a big crater or a big boulder, yes. then it, maybe it will maneuver around yeah, it, it and then slowly yes, descend. Yes, it, it, it has a capability to move uh, a few meters horizontally. So it, can, it, cannot, mo it cannot move on uh, forever. It can move a certain distance uh, within its profile and then it can look for a safe place and it lands. It can. Uh, it also has to keep in mind that the uh, f it's suitably flat. Mm -hmm. It can withstand about 15 degrees of slope, but not more than that. Uh, that none of the four legs actually uh, step onto a boulder. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So those kind of things have to be avoided. Okay, and Amitabh, tell me, uh, you said that there are cameras which are going to watch the lunar surface as it lands. Mm -hmm. So will we, watching this, uh, in the middle of the night on Friday, will we be able to see it landing? Okay, so that's a disappointment. Uh, I think a lot of people are waiting to see the video of uh, this lander descending on moon's surface. That video is not available. It, it cannot be taken because there is no external camera available to capture the descent of the lander onto the moon. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we'll have to wait for Bollywood to make films to see the actual descent happening uh, or probably we'll have to be... Uh, remain content with a recreation of an or an animation what certainly would be available sometime later is after the landing uh, and once the rover comes out uh, rover has uh, a camera on it and so has the lander and they can actually photograph oh, each, other. each other they oh. Uh, they can photograph each other as well and those uh, once they land on the moon surface those images and videos can be made available but the actual descent that that will we can only imagine or see it in movies okay so now tell me say uh 150 a.m and the lander lands hmm. what happens after that i mean when will uh, uh pragyan actually emerge from the lander do we know that uh, yes, it, it would happen uh, roughly after three hours. Okay. Uh, things happen very slowly after that. Uh, but once it lands and it stabilizes on its four feet, uh, you will already see celebrations uh, in Israel. I mean, that is, uh, uh, you know, 80% of the mission objective probably is complete after that. Uh, the next big thing is that uh, now... It has a certain height, so it, it's like the lander would be somewhere here on, uh, uh, you know, placed on its four legs, and then. So this much would be what? I mean, what five feet, four feet? Uh, I think I, I'll have to check that. I don't remember exactly uh, uh, how tall it's it would be. Big. It won't be very big, but uh, you can imagine it's not exactly grounded. Okay. So uh, it's on stilts, for example, uh, and then after some time, uh, it opens up. 
and there is a slope that comes uh, out okay. which would enable the pragyan to slowly slope down and uh, move on to the moon's surface. Uh, that exercise will take a long time. Uh, you know, pragyan, uh, which is a robotic thing, it, it has it is six wheels and it can move around. But it will move around at a snail's pace. Rovers are not meant to move at very great. So we were just now talking about speeds of 20,000 kilometers. So that's one like extreme, oh, yeah. one extreme. Now we are talking in terms of one centimeter per hour. That is the speed at which Pragyan would so that's move. That's slower around. than a snail. That's slower <laughs> than a snail. So over a 14-day period, uh, that's the lifetime of the Pragyan uh, on the moon's surface. It would move barely half a kilometer. Okay. So that's the speed at which it would be moving. Okay. But all the while it will be collecting information data uh, through the instruments that is uh, there in the Pragyan uh, rover. So, I mean, all of this sounds wonderfully planned out. But then tell me, Amitabh, what is it that, um, uh, I, I don't want to say something that can go wrong, but why is it that the ISRO uh, chairman is saying that these are going to be the most terrifying 15 minutes uh, of my life? Uh, uh, why, why is it terrifying? So, one of the main things is obviously that it's we are doing it for the first time. So there is an obvious nervousness, uh, you know, anything, uh, something as sensitive as this, and uh, something which requires this high degree of precision. You are doing it for the first time. You are nervous, which is very understandable. Uh, but also for the fact that you know, very recently, uh, just four or five months ago, uh, you know, Israel had sent a similar kind of mission to Moon. And uh, it also was supposed to make a soft landing on the moon. It reached this particular stage. Uh, and then while making the attempt to land, it wasn't able to decelerate fast enough, adequately enough, to be able to make a soft landing. Oh, okay. What exactly happened was then it had to crash land. And it got destroyed in the process. The mission was considered a failure. Uh, so there are dangers in, there are problems in this particular maneuver. Uh, it's, it's not as simple as just breaking, sp uh, you know, uh, from a particular speed and breaking down to a certain Absolutely. speed as we are very familiar to. But, uh, but it's also a fact that Chandrayaan-2 has certain uh, more safeguards to deal with a situation like this. Like I said, it has one uh, more, one additional thruster. So, if something goes up, uh, wrong with one of the thrusters or, or you know it doesn't fire according to the pre-programmed profile uh, then there is another thruster which can you know which can be activated from the uh, ground or also automatically by the uh, lander so there are some additional features safety evolves that are designed within uh, chandrayaan so uh, it should be okay that, that. so chandrayaan 1 actually uh, what it 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 threw a projectile onto the surface of the moon? Exactly. What, yeah. okay. so, so Chandrayaan-1 was an orbiter mission. Uh, an orbiter so mission. It, it was this an, is a lander mission. It, this is a lander because mission. Because it lands on the moon. So, okay. so Chandrayaan-1, so one of the uh, instruments on board Chandrayaan-1 uh, was fired out in an uncontrolled way. So it was just, no, of course, uh, the place where it's going to hit, that was all decided. Uh, and when it would be released, that was all decided. But there was no controlling mechanism to control its speed. So it just went out of the spacecraft and hit the surface of the moon uh, and got destroyed in the process. So that sort of a mission is what is known as impact mission. Uh, there have been several other impact missions also. So other countries have also done. Because even while it is... Uh, you know, it gets destroyed in the process while hitting the uh, surface at great speeds. While making that journey, it is still able to collect some data and relay it yeah. back. In fact, the uh, the uh, the one that went out of Chandrayaan one, it it used to be called MIP or Moon Impact Probe. Uh, so ISRO uh, says that it was able to while while on its journey towards. Uh, 
the moon's surface, it was able to send data which presented additional evidence for the presence of water. But they couldn't publish those findings because you know there was some calibration error because of which they could not publish that. But there was apparently an additional set of evidence for presence of water on the moon. Fascinating, fascinating. So in a few hours from now, between 1.30 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. Saturday morning, the Vikram lander of the Chandrayaan mission is about to descend on the moon. I'm sure all of us will be watching with bated breath. This is a new chapter in the history of space science in India and a wonderful new achievement for ISRO as and when that lands. Thank you so much, Amitabh, for Thank explaining you. the whole thing to us. And do keep watching the Indian Express.